Arnie is smart, funny, he has a twinkle in his eye. Straightforward. What you see is what you get. He can uh, balance more balls at once in the air than, uh, than I've seen. A man of the highest integrity. He's just so bright that you can't get anything by him. Frankly, he's the smartest guy I've ever met. Slow-witted, left-wing pinko, uh, a shrinking violet, very quiet, not. Whether it's business or in healthcare, the key point with Arnie is leadership, and he knows how to lead. And he's left a mark on many of us. And I still get from the frontline staff, that's not how Arnie did it, that's not how Arnie did it, or oh, when Arnie was here, this is what we did. And I don't think that will ever end at Sinai. He's a legend there. Arnie was creating a culture of excellence. I think he was in his late 20s, early 30s when he ran critical care at Mount Sinai. Then he became chief of medicine at Mount Sinai when he was 33, I think, and then chairman, you know, not long after that. The guy's incredible. Even before he was chief of medicine, he was really chief of the hospital. I went in after a very long night in the intensive care unit at Toronto General to book an appointment to interview for the job of chief resident at Mount Sinai. Arnie's door was open. He saw me there, blatantly said, who are you? What do you want? And when I explained why I was there, he said, come in now. About a three second interview occurred and I exited in my greens with the job of chief resident. If you want to learn medicine or if you want to learn life, you couldn't do a better thing than be Arnie's chief resident. He knew how to tap into people on an individual level, very, very clear messages about working together as a team, making sure that the best resources were brought to the patient 24-7. Arnie had a major task when he became physician in chief at Toronto Hospital. Almost single-handedly devised a plan in which the chief of medicine, beginning with himself, had unusual discretion on redistributing funds earned by doctors to reward excellence wherever he found it. Doctors would only agree to this given trust in the leader himself. And only Arnie could have done that at that point. This plan is one of the most successful, if not the most successful practice plan uh, in North America. Recently it was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association as an academic practice plan to be modeled. had every leadership position in medicine at uh, the university you could possibly have from physician in chief to chair to dean. Arnie as dean of medicine sat on every fully affili affiliated teaching hospital board. So he was really plugged in, he knew what was going on in every institution. He was a very strong advocate for research. He was able to make the faculty of medicine greater than the sum of its parts. He did it by forming Arnie's army. He, his men and women, the students, the postgraduate students, the postdoctoral fellows, the clinical faculty, the research faculty, they were all Arnie's army in common cause, making the University of Toronto's Faculty of Medicine one of the best in the world. He's a financial wizard, so he can figure out a win-win in a financially difficult time between parties and negotiate it. We are, in fact, the leading research faculty of medicine in Canada, and I would say Arnie had a great deal to do with that. Arnie also was vice provost for relations with healthcare institutions, and as a result, the uh, Toronto Health Sciences Complex became one of the best in the world. He's used those critical care skills in his entrepreneurial consulting capacity just like he did in the intensive care unit. He convinced me to go to Ottawa and convince the board of Genome Canada that it was critical that they fund our scientists and we were successful. I did not believe we would be successful and what this is proof of is Arnie's creativity and his determination to make things happen. 
Arnie and I were engaged virtually from day one at the development of the medical school in, uh, in Northern Ontario. And it's a real tribute to Arnie, the multiple skills that he demonstrated uh, during the creation of that, uh, that medical school. His expertise and experience has been invaluable really to the success of getting the school started. And I think it's fair to say that without Arnie's contribution, the school would not be the success that it is today. He's the only guy I know that can pay uh, a parking attendant, hire a, a chief of uh, surgery, um, get directions and drive at the same time. Arnie is legendary for his energy, his apparent ability to function 23 hours a day. Arnie does everything very quickly. It not only thinks quickly, as you know, he speaks very quickly. He speaks faster than the speed of thought. They described a new, even shorter measure of time than a nanosecond, and that's an abosecond. He's kind of a multitasker of the highest order. One of the challenges of working with Arnie is that Arnie never sleeps. Arnie would phone people any day uh, of the year, any time of day, almost any time of night. No introduction to the person who answers, hi, Mike there, and having the punchy 20 second conversation, hanging up. You better get everything you want to say in there quickly because when Arnie is ready to hang up, click, and he's gone. You know the conversation is ended when you hear the dial tone. Uh, fortunately, he often calls back a second time and says, oh, one more thing. I think we all, all knew that if we neglected to mention the University of Toronto on a presentation or a publication, we were invariably going to get a phone call from Arnie. Hawker, why'd you forget to put University of Toronto? You'll never let that happen again, right? Right, hang up. When I retired, I, I was given the ceremonial gift of a, a cell phone. And I remarked at that time that Arnie must have been behind it because Arnie wanted to be sure that I was available at 11 or 12 at the evening or seven or six or seven in the morning. Arnie tells the story of uh, his telephone calls by um, having a child pick up the phone in one of the houses he tortured at 10.30 at night and simply covering the phone and saying, Dad, it's him. One time he called my house and my daughter said I wasn't there, and he said, yes, he is. And, uh, you know, it was kind of one of those back and forth sort of things, but it was classic Arnie Haberman, so, you know, uh, it's all off a duck's back. You can be explaining something or trying to explain something, and in the middle of it, he says, stop. Stop? Stop. And you must stop, otherwise <laughs> you're going to be talked over. But Arnie has the capacity to ask you a question and answer the question for you before you even answer the question. I think Arnie summed it up well once himself when he said, please don't speak when I'm interrupting you. I actually stopped listening to Arnie when he did that. I just kept right on going. So whenever he says shush or stop, that was really go and talk louder. He has a very quick uh, fork to mouth uh, time. His meal is gone instantaneously and you're just starting. I always felt that he got a break on his uh, lunch. By the time they waited, it, there was little left but the plate because as he waited in line, Arnie would eat his food. Tells the, the server he'll have a Diet Coke and the Diet Coke arrives and 30 seconds later it's empty. I've been to lunch with him at the Four Seasons where the waiter actually brought an ice bucket without being asked and it was filled with Diet Cokes. Is there an off button? <laughs> There's no off button. I mean, Arnie gives 150% to everything he does. He seems to be able to accomplish three times as much as anybody else given the same time frame. Well, you can't have a better friend than Arnie. There's nothing that, uh, that you need help with that he won't help you with. He'll drop everything and come to your assistance. You know, the question, when are you ever finished with Arnie? You're never finished with Arnie because I worked with Arnie as a, as a consultant uh, very intensely over, over several years. I now consider Arnie to be a dear friend. The beauty with Arnie is his loyalty and support is unconditional once you have connected with him. At the end of the day, he's a, he is a great friend. And if Arnie is your friend, he's your friend for life.
Arnie wouldn't be Arnie without Janice. Well, if I had to select Arnie's greatest overall achievement, I would say it was convincing Janice to marry him. She has the patience of a saint, and she is a saint. She has as much patience as he is impatient. She's the opposite of Arnie in terms of personality, so to the extent that opposites attract or are compatible, she's perfect. When I first met him, actually one of the things that I found very intriguing about him is that he talked so much about his dad and how smart he was and um, how much he learned from him. And for me, that was a signal that he loved family. He's very proud of his children, very proud of his family. And I think that's his the major joy in his life. I'm very proud of Barney. Um, Talk to the first day. You're not supposed to interject. That's right. That's Shush. Right. I had to sum up Arnie in one word. Fast. Confident. Incredible. Connected. Lots and lots and lots of energy. He defined critical care medicine, I believe, in Canada. He's made my career and many others terrific, and he's had a very positive impact on the lives of thousands and thousands of patients in Ontario. He wasn't just dean of medicine, he's also done many other things that have a significant impact on the practice of medicine in, in, in Ontario and also in Canada, and actually in North America. I've always thought he could do anything he wanted to do, um, because for him it's just mind over matter. I think he can do anything. A description I read in Harrison's textbook of medicine, and it said, Tinsley Harrison was a dazzling personality that scintillated across the medical screen. You know what, when I read that, that's Arnie. I'm delighted to, in absentia, share this evening with my friend, my colleague, my student, Dr. Arnie Aberman, who uh, many years ago joined us uh, at the University of Southern California and became perhaps the outstanding young doctor I've ever had the privilege to train. And even then, it became quite clear the remarkable future that was in store for this young physician, educator, and scientist. And I lend my congratulations and my admiration and best wishes on this occasion that honors him and that also propagates a cause that is so very meaningful to so many of us, including, of course, uh, my family and me. Thank you for this opportunity.